Hello. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back from your lunch. Thank you for joining us. My name is Michael Caselli, in case you hadn't been here before, and I will be your moderator for the day. Um, I have a wonderful panel for you today. It's a Ask Me Anything crypto panel. So at any point, please raise your hand and ask any of the people on the panel whatever question you may have. Um, joining me on the panel is Ivan Montnik from Soft Swiss, Adrian Frank from Better Betting, Oren Barber from CoinPoint, and Mayor Lehev from Panda. And um, I'm gonna first ask these guys to explain what they do in crypto, why it's cool, and uh, a little bit about their background so that when you're directing your questions, you'll know everyone's skills and specialties. Ivan, why don't you start? Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Ivan Montik, and I'm the CEO of the SoftSwiss provider, B2B provider, platform provider, games provider. Uh, we have been in the crypto sphere from 2013. We were first in the world who introduced the platform for the classic online casino, but uh, for uh, gamble uh, with Bitcoin. Uh, so before us, there were some uh, DICE uh, websites. The most uh, successful was the Satoshi DICE, uh, but we were the first who did this classic online casino with slots, with game providers, with table games, etc. Um, yeah, and basically we got a lot of information, a lot of experience uh, since that uh, time, and we host uh, brands like BitStars, BetChain, and BitCasino, they all are uh, working on our platform. Great, so you're a B2B supplier of uh, crypto platform casinos and uh, not going through an ICO, started it actually probably before the trend really was to become uh, an ICO. Exactly, so we were mm, uh, a lot of time, I mean many years before the ICO hype and we are not uh, offering only the crypto uh, solution, it's like hybrid solution. So fiat as well, but yeah, a big part of our business is the crypto casino business, yeah. Perfect. We are. Hello everyone, my name is Maor. I'm the co-founder of Panda Trading Systems. We are a B2B platform providers for more than 10 years now. We are offering a complete solution for anyone that wants to launch an online brokerage. Until two years ago, the main focus was Forex and CFD. And today the main focus is, uh, is a crypto platform, a fully brokerage bas based on crypto. Uh, our clients using the crypto in order to acquire the client, monetize the buzz about the crypto, and then making most of the revenues from moving those traders to trade other uh, fiat currencies on the platform. Uh, we are based in Israel and we are a highly boutique software provider, so we are highly focused on customizations. We are managing the technology for some of the biggest brands in the financial industry. For example, 24 Option that was doing binary option and today mainly focus on Forex and uh, cryptocurrency. Brilliant. Oren. Hi, my name is uh, Oren Barber. I'm the CEO uh, and co-founder of CoinPoint. Uh, we are a marketing agency established in 2013. Um, we, are, we have two offices, one in Manila, Philippines, the second one is in Eastern Europe, in Sofia. Uh, our core business until recently were uh, iGaming and uh, market education for uh, different uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. Recently, we are more into ICOs uh, because of the growing demand. And we are also a big believers in uh, pushing forward uh, specifically Bitcoin cash uh, currency. And Adrian. Hi, everyone. I, I've been in online gambling since 1995. In fact, I think I started the first online gambling site in uh, September 95, and payments. Um, and uh, more recently, uh, mid last year, set up Better Betting, which is a foundation which has built a crypto based uh, peer to peer betting system. We went through an ICO process in the lot, towards the end of last year. Actually, it finished last week raised six million dollars and uh, we're now executing on our promises. Uh, we'll be delivering a, tr a truly decentralized peer-to-peer -peer betting platform for the World Cup uh, in June this year. Very cool. Now, if I could have some audience participation, please. Can I please beseech you all to stand? Can everyone please stand up? 
everyone. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, now you may sit down. Um, oh, sorry, stay standing if you have a wallet or an exchange account, a crypto wallet or a crypto exchange account. So sit down if you do not. Please sit down if you did not make any transactions in the last week from that account. Please sit down if you did not make any transactions that were outside of gaming last week. So if you didn't just pay an affiliate or get paid as an affiliate or anything like that, uh, if you hadn't bought anything that's real or tangible, please sit down. And I think, Oren, this was an Oren idea, I think this proves the point. You could all sit down now, thank you. <laughs> that the transaction levels are not, uh, phenomenal across the board. And if we're gonna want these cryptocurrencies to work, I would think at least the people that started out uh, standing up after the first question should be trying to use crypto a little bit more and encouraging places that you transact to actually take crypto because that's the only way this, this economy will, uh, will start to grow. So thank you for the demonstration. But let me first, let me ask this question um, to the panel and um, why should someone want to work with a crypto gaming site as an affiliate or as someone who sells services to the industry over a fiat site? I mean, what are the advantages that you'd find working with a crypto site that you won't find in fiat? To anyone. Yeah, I can start. Uh, so I wouldn't uh, uh, split uh, the crypto and fiat affiliation. Uh, basically, the the main principles of the affiliation business is the same and uh, it's same in crypto business and the uh, uh, fiat business. Um, but uh, with the crypto, you can be one of the first or one of the just affiliates that uh, can uh, transfer the knowledge uh, from already gathered uh, fiat casinos and work in these fiat businesses into crypto space, which is still quite uh, virgin, I would say. Uh, even uh, taking to the fact that the last year was like a super uh, big hype on all cryptocurrencies and ICOs, uh, I consider still the business is virgin. Uh, so basically there is a big opportunity to be one of the first there in this business and there is a big opportunity if you know some affiliate, uh, let's say tricks or uh, knowledge uh, how to attract traffic then ob obviously you can also attract uh, traffic uh, with from I mean with gamblers or gamers that can use cryptocurrency and there are a lot of uh, people who just have and hold the currency and not uh, as an investment but just uh, like a fun you say like this and yeah basically and they want to play as well so when they are searching for the websites they are searching for uh, nice casinos trustworthy casinos so basically you can help them to find these casinos and you can help casinos to make money as well. So I, I, I guess as, our, as we had our example with everyone standing up and sitting down, um, the, I, what you're saying is there's a lot of people with crypto that want something to do with it. And those are a great audience for you and you have a very transactional product in the gaming space. So therefore you're gonna attract people that want to use crypto but perhaps don't have a lot of outlets to spend it on. I, mean you could, I think you could probably buy Starbucks with it but you know, the, the, the common complaint is like my coffee cost me $7 like three minutes after I bought it. <laughs> At least in December. Now it's cheaper. I mean, uh, I'm not talking about only Bitcoin. I mean, uh, I'm talking sure. about... Uh, any crypto. Any cryptocurrency, yeah. Um, right. And yeah, basically, it's a big, big ocean of uh, players. And it is also... I mean, if you are speaking about some uh, countries or regions where there is no so... It's not so easy for the player maybe to to do the fiat transactions, uh, the cryptocurrency is the ideal uh, tool for that. Adrian. Yeah, I'd, I'd take a slightly different approach in that I think um, you know what we've seen so far is really just plugging crypto in as a payment mechanism. We, we're coming from a different angle and saying, let's transform the gaming experience into crypto. Let's actually move away from having a sports book at all. Let's let individuals bet with other individuals who don't know each other and make sure the transaction's secure and that they get paid when they win. And let's proliferate this to everywhere. Let people bet wherever they want to bet. 
we have massive traction already in Asia where, where access to, to, to funding and to bookmaking sites is difficult. And also from wholesale bettors, guys who bet millions of pounds and just can't get a bet on in the UK. I mean, the books won't take their money. So, so I think there's a whole new space to be discovered. It actually is way more exciting than the old space in some respects. Yes, it's new. Yes, we're, we're sort of virginal now. But uh, you know, I'd love to see you all again in a year's time in the same place, and we'll see where we're at. Fair play. Go ahead. I think uh, for affiliates, you need to test your traffic and to see what gives you the best revenue. And I think that today there is a big opportunity uh, for a Forex providers that I'm willing to pay, let's say, 1,000 CPA per FTD for accepting crypto clients. And that's a big opportunity because today we see that the crypto traffic is cheaper than other sources. And there is a lot of uh, legitimacy when you transfer the message about come and trade crypto. People don't look on who's the broker, they look to buy the crypto and sometimes even to sell. And I think there is a big gap between the prices that the brokers providing the CPA to what actually is the spend of the affiliates. I think it will go down because most, as you mentioned, most of the, the players, they come to buy and they hold the currency, they hold the CFD, but they don't play with it. And if they don't play with it and there is no leverage in the systems, the brokers don't make money at the end of the day. Uh, but currently the situation is that you can easily make at least 300% if you know how to optimize your traffic by sending crypto related traffic into a online Forex and CFD broker. Yeah, I, I would like to spotlight um, uh, the difference between crypto traffic and non-crypto traffic. We have uh, one guy here uh, um, uh, with Casino and the other one with, uh, with a uh, trading platform. Um, casino players playing uh, slots, uh, live dealers and so on are coming from traditional channels. The ones that want to deposit with, uh, with cryptocurrencies usually come from different channels. And these are two different types of uh, players, so this is two different types of, uh, of traders. Um, the behavior is different, the sources that they're coming from are different. Uh, what they're looking for and how they uh, use the system is different. And this is a big opportunity for affiliates uh, that already drive traffic of slots player to some uh, brands to understand there is a new community that is growing every day. And this community is the supporters of uh, cryptocurrencies, uh, this one or the other. And uh, the way, uh, to the place to, to find them and uh, the way to acquire them is maybe a bit different, but eventually the bottom line, they will play or trade with cryptocurrencies. Well, tell me, where do you find them? Where do you go and f where do you find cryptocurrency holders to be players? Um, I mean, are you converting people that are thinking right now, I should probably buy some crypto, and then you're directing them somewhere to get crypto, and then directing them to the casino? Or are you looking for guys that already hold crypto? What's, uh, what's, what's the source of traffic? The sources of traffic uh, are a bit different. We're looking into mining pools. We're looking into trading pools. We're looking for the education funders because, uh, like you saw before, most of us uh, are not involved in the cryptocurrency. We all want to be there. We all want to buy Bitcoin, but none of us, most of us don't, do not have uh, uh, the funds. Um, another level of this industry, which is uh, less common in the uh, old-fashioned uh, gaming world uh, is the applications. I'm talking about WhatsApp groups, I'm talking about Telegram groups, and I'm talking about Slack. Specifically, D3 are very, very good uh, acquisition channels. Just an idea for some of the affiliates. Brilliant. Do we have some audience questions relating to anything we've discussed so far, or anything tangential, or anything else? No? I'll continue then. Um, okay, so let's assume that I like what you're saying. And let Let's quickly assume that um, I want to become an affiliate and I want to work in the crypto market. So now I've got an issue. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to send some traffic. I know what it's costing me to send the traffic. But the volatility of things like Bitcoin in this market are so vast that I'm not really sure that uh, what's going to happen to my money when the value of that currency goes down. How is that addressed? Um, so... Uh, if we look at the uh, uh, history, let's say a short history of uh, even four or five years, uh, and we we'll look into the long distance uh, for the future, obviously we can see that the 
the all uh, crypto business that was involved in this uh, casino trading and all this uh, other industries, they all uh, just gathered many many thousands of percentage of gain of the of their capital in cryptos. So basically, if we look at the short distance, of course, then we might see like big fluctuations, like in December, Bitcoin uh, hit it 19,000 19, uh, dollars. Now it's about eight, etc. Yeah, of course, then it's big fluctuation. But it's if you look uh, like it w how it was 2013, 14, 15, and now, and if you just uh, will uh, see the future, then obviously uh, if you uh, have a good portfolio of affiliate traffic and uh, you will earn cryptocurrency, and you are not really uh, uh, in demand to spend all your money for your life, and you can uh, hold something then obviously you will be uh, gaining some additional uh, revenue out just out of this investment. Uh, and another point I just didn't mention before, uh, why maybe I feel it also should uh, take into account working with cryptocurrencies, that there are a lot of risks right now in the fiat world. So everybody knows about the banks, the problems, the AML uh, procedures, and how easy it is to be m blocked uh, even with... Uh, payment wallets like even Skrill, for example. We experience these situations. We had affiliates, for example, from Russia. They, uh, they work in uh, like, I don't know, 10 years already in this business, and the Skrill account just uh, will be blocked without any explanation. And basically, you are earning money, but you don't control the money. In terms of cryptocurrency, you control your money completely, 100%. So nobody can block your account, nobody can uh, take it out on this something else. So you control your funds. So you don't need to have a bank account. You don't need to take it into your own. Exactly. So if you want to sell something, it's easy. F uh, so uh, to sell today any crypto coin, it's really easy. Uh, but to lose your funds in fiat, it's even easier <laughs> than that. So sure. So then, Orin, then my or uh, you had yeah, yeah, you give an example of an affiliate that is uh, buying traffic somewhere, and then you get paid from the from the casino in uh, in the cryptocurrency, and then you have the problem with the price going up and down. Uh, this is exactly the problem with the adoption because if this affiliate can pay to his designers and journalists uh, in the traffic sources and he can buy the media with cryptocurrency and he can pay his uh, employees with cryptocurrency, then the price doesn't matter. Then the ecosystem is completed. I agree. I think that affiliate should request to receive the, the CPA in fiat currencies. They shouldn't take the volatility risk. Uh, my Opinion, personal opinion is that the Bitcoin is going to be fifty dollar within uh, two weeks. F f five zero. Five zero. Okay, I'll uh, buy some then. Thousand. You can buy, and I think people will buy, and and it will go. I'll buy some of you for sixty right now. I'm willing to <laughs> sell if if anyone is willing to take the sell position against me. I'm I'm taking it, but I think affiliate should stay with fiat currencies unless, as my friend mentioned they can roll the spend of media and pay salaries with the uh, bitcoins. Currencies are here for stay and there will be trading, but the volatility is, is not uh, what the affiliate should uh, work with. Well, uh, just out of curiosity, following up with that, why are you so negative on uh, the price of bitcoin? Uh, I think you can go to YouTube and search why bitcoin will fail and you'll see all the, the reasons. It's a long uh, lecture, but Every time in the history of humankind, when your grandma told you, why shouldn't I, I buy a financial asset? Usually the financial asset is crashing. Uh, it's an unregulated market. The crime-related activities are high. Money laundering-related activities are high. The fraud in our business is high. I see a platform providers that are giving wallets and selling crypto, but they just take the money and within two weeks they will say that someone hacked their systems. Uh, people are coming to us to take a crypto platform and you see that they don't have a business plan. They are here just to steal money from people. And I think all of it is going to have the effect, including the regulators that will come into the picture much more strongly than what they're doing it today. But crypto and blockchain is here to stay. Specifically, the Bitcoin, uh, fifty dollar within two weeks. Wow, you heard it here first. Shit, <laughs> so mine now. 
Um, does, it, does anyone want to counter that argument on Bitcoin very quickly? Because I think there might be two sides of that coin. Uh, you know, I, I'm not nearly as clairvoyant as my friend here. So I have no idea what Bitcoin will be in two weeks' time. But I'd take that bet, actually. Yeah, it sounds pretty good. Let's Let's do it. I, know, I, I, I know a good sort of betting token we could use to seal the bet. Ser seriously, uh, volatility is a massive problem for any, any new currency. You know, if you look at any currencies going back, forget about crypto, go back to gold nuggets or whatever, in their adoption phase, they have volatility. Now, will Bitcoin's volatility smooth out eventually? Personally, I, I thought it would have already, but it didn't, so I was wrong. Um, it's, it's something that we're very conscious of in the sports betting world because clearly you don't want to place a bet and then win it and finally you have less money than you had when you Oops, too long. Um, having said all that, uh, I, I, it's all about usage. You know, the more usage your, your token has uh, and the, the, the less friction it is for it being used, the more smooth the, the path will be. And I think that's something that we're focusing on really hard. At the moment, it's way too difficult to hold an Ether wallet. I don't know how many people here have got Ether wallets or my Ether wallets or MetaMask? You've got to write a whole lot of numbers down and print them out and don't lose them. And then you, know, you do, of course. I always lose pieces of paper. It's painful. The experience has got to become simpler. It's got to become more easy. If we want to get the average Joe Blow sports better into using our currency, we're going to have to provide them with an absolutely user-friendly experience and get them using it all day long and staying in the currency, not cashing in and out. Let them cash out and see that they can, but eventually they need to stay in the currency and it becomes a medium of exchange. And, and, and I think with any currency, if you can establish a strong use case for, for exchange, you know, forget about buying cups of coffee with Bitcoin where the, where the Bitcoin contra transaction costs twice the cost of the coffee. I mean, that just isn't going to work out. So Bitcoin's lost its, uh, its, use, of, uh, its use, basically. Um, it's become more of a, uh, a value token or a trading thing. But you know, having said all that, if your currency has a use, I think it'll be more stable, it'll, it'll be smoother, uh, and, and probably the more focused that use is, the less volatility there'll be on the currency. And certainly we aim to, to, to work towards that model with, a, with better betting, with a better token. Does anyone in the audience have any contribution or question? Yes. <coughs> Here I come. Okay, I'm a simpleton, 23 years old, no real, I'm not, I'm just postulating. I use psychology to postulate. Um, anyway, so I had this discussion with um, uh, my uh, bosses actually, and I, I said that, by, I postulated that where Bitcoin dropped originally a few weeks ago, that it would go back up and it would stabilize itself. And the reason that I gave, and I actually had this discussion with someone today is that when you invest in something that is not the same, meaning that, okay, if you're investing in the interests of people, that's a common denominator, right? If a lot of powerful people have interest in cryptocurrency, then they are motivated to push that, which is what, what you were saying with, if you increase the usage of it, then you're increasing the value. Now, my question is, are you increasing the crypto value of your own crypto when you do that, when you increase the traffic, or are you just increasing the general crypto value and thereby increasing your own? I don't think there is <coughs> such a thing as a general crypto value. I mean, crypt crypto is here to stay as a scientific methodology for decentralized value storage. Okay, that's fundamentally what it does. It's going to be like money today in the, in the next 20 years, 10 years, 5 years. I don't know how long. So I, I don't think there's such a no, this notion that there's a general value of cryptos is, 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 not, is, a, is so, sort of nonsensical. I think what will happen is different types of cryptos will become, will have their own value, then that's gonna be determined by how much they're used. And the, right. more, the more focused they are, and, the more, and to some degree the more narrowly focused they are, and the more efficiently they work, and the more efficiently they interact with the outside world, will determine the stability and the value of those tokens. I, <coughs> I personally think that usage have no relation to value. Uh, gold today, I have gold. It doesn't mean that I can take a piece of gold and buy coffee or do anything with it, but it has a value. Again, you're, I will take a piece of gold for some coffee, and I you. will buy all your Bitcoins. You, 
No worries. <laughs> no, but all due respect, you having gold, is, you are using it. You're using it to store value. That's your reason for having gold. You're not using it to make rings or anything like that. You're saying, I believe in the scarcity of this metal. I'm going to hold it as a store of value. And if that's what Bitcoin becomes in the end, so be it. But that doesn't mean to say that cash is like that. So cash is different. You know, Bitcoin cash is a different model. Ethereum is a different model and so on. I think that uh, when you look on tokens, and I think that uh, there is a big opportunity when there will be a crash, uh, because everything will go down. And like the stocks market, that everything went down. If you took the Amazon stocks, now you made a lot of money. The same thing are in tokens. And people need to think, if this guy is right, and one day I will open the mobile app and I will see the Bitcoin in $40, what token should I buy? And the value of the token, other than the bubble itself, is the utility behind the token. If it's a company, for example, like a uh, cloud, their token allow you to buy uh, cloud services using Amazon or uh, Google Cloud, there is a value behind it. And the opportunity is to, to buy tokens that are short, that you can exchange them in some kind of utility, and utility equal value. But sure. unfortunately, 99% of the coins don't have any utility that have value currently. I would just uh, comment on the previous uh, speech, uh, about $50. Uh, I hear it every year, actually. We were hosting the first Bitcoin seminar at ICE 2014. And at that time already, like uh, it was like a first crash from 2000, uh, 1,200 to about 800, and then 600, then 300. But it, go, uh, uh, it went up again. So basically, these discussions are uh, happening every year. And yeah, there are like believers and not believers. But uh, again, I, I, I look at the uh, history in the, in the statistics, and it shows that uh, basically in the long term, uh, the all uh, major cryptocurrencies will be uh, going up in, uh, against the fiat currencies. And it's not necessarily because the uh, Bitcoin or Bitcoin Cash or Ethereum will be more available, but it could be because of the fiat currency will be less available. So just imagine that the dollar can be uh, just uh, just lose, uh, just can lose uh, his, its uh, value dramatically if something will happen, some war, for example, some uh, collapse. Uh, so people will seek uh, how to or where to save the money. So basically, and the cryptocurrency is that that, that, that instrument right now that is the most uh, stable and the most secured in the world, I believe. So uh, you can't uh, buy one ton of or even, I don't know, 100 kilograms of, of gold right now. Nobody can accept banks. But you can uh, buy the same value of cryptocurrency right now easily and control it yourself. Nobody can uh, take it out from you. And another comment about the uh, hackers and uh, all this uh, weakness of the so software providers. So basically, yeah, it's the uh, it's same in the fiat uh, world. So you should choose a stable, sustainable uh, provider of any software or any solution that uh, you want to use. It uh, doesn't matter if you use crypto or not crypto. Um, yeah, so uh, this is basically about this. I will tell you a story, a short one, I promise. Uh, 12 years ago, I opened an hedge fund. I was an high frequency trader. I was trading around $20 million in my hedge fund. And after a few years, I became a software provider. And now, I don't care where the market is going. It can go up, it can go down. I have my, my clients that are doing money by making volumes in the system and everybody happy. We are here to monetize the trend. We don't really care if it will go up or if it will go down. The opportunity, by the way, today is that all the funnels, make money funnels, are saying, buy the crypto, it will go up. Why not making funnels also when the trend is down? Sell the crypto. Uh, so I think that we need to monetize the trend. If it will be 50 or 100,000, it doesn't really matter. You need to make sure that you're not exposed to it from a business perspective. On the personal level, do whatever you want. It's so fragile that I recommend just to monetize the trend. If it will be forever amazing, if not, the, your businesses have no risk. 
Hi, my name is David, and uh, my company, we, a part of our company is uh, specialized in uh, crypto trading. And uh, I just would like to come back to one, one sentence you said. You said uh, Bitcoin $50, and then in one sentence you finished that you believe in cryptocurrencies, but not in Bitcoin. And just my question is why specifically not in Bitcoin, if you believe in cryptocurrencies overall? Because to transfer value as a utility and to buy utility easily, it's, it's, it's amazing. For me to accept funds from clients, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare. For affiliate, for example, to accept funds from a broker, it takes time. But why not to build a model whenever a client registers a deposit, at the same time, you receive the funds, you receive the value, and you can spend it immediately. Why wait two weeks? Why wait uh, 30 days? The same thing is happening within all industries. So as a mechanism of transfer utility with value, it's amazing. So because of that, I think Tether, for example, leave aside that it's a fake coin, that there is no money behind it. It's amazing. If you can have a, a big bank, a Swiss bank, whatever, that is guaranteed that you have a token, that the token is, is equal to some fiat currency, and I can transfer it to you within seconds, that's amazing. Uh, the Bitcoin is, is like every bubble. It can grow, but some small thing that can happen uh, that can make it fragile. You know, the value of the market doesn't... There can be $200 billion of, of crypto or Bitcoin. It doesn't matter. You need to look on the amount that is traded. Because if the amount is traded is small, the market can go down rapidly. We saw it on the, uh, on the US with all the CBOs, CDOs, whatever financial instruments they had. The market was huge, but the amount that was traded was low. Even without any transaction, just the limit orders can take it down. So I don't think we will see a slow moving down. It will be one day that the bubble will just, whatever happened to bubbles. Now, but what you say is not really true. There's a choice that you don't get paid in two weeks in Bitcoin. Technically, you could be paid in Bitcoin within 30 minutes of a deposit. It's not a function of Bitcoin that's a problem. It's a function of the sites that are offering you an affiliate program. I'm saying that the ability of immediately receive a compensation on your action. Say within 30 minutes? No, you can use Bitcoin, you can use Tether, you can use Dash, or if it's a closed loop within the same wallet like, like PayPal, you get it immediately. So if you are, you getting your, even if you're getting Bitcoin, but if it's within the same wallet, it can be done immediately. That's the value of the technology. The Bitcoin itself, it's a different story. We had another question. <coughs> uh, just be, just say something, Mark. I think we're missing one little point here, and, and, I, and, I, and I think it's really, for me, quite fundamental. Most people don't really understand how money works and what, what a dollar is or what a pound is. For most people, a pound is what you can buy with it. So it's basically a piece of paper that you believe someone somewhere is backing up with some sort of value. And you, really, fundamentally, what it's about is a pound, is, well, a 10 pound note is, a, is two pints of beer. It sort of boils down, well, actually in London, one and a half pints of beer. So, so that's the public perception, but if you go back to the really, the deep-rooted, um, what, what does money actually mean? It's down, it's down to supply and demand, but it's also down to, to, uh, to availability, and that's why gold's great, because it's really hard to dig gold out of the ground, it's a finite amount of it, it's a finite supply. Bitcoin's model is f philosophically very, very clever. It's, a, it's a, a, a decreasing pool, in fact, because people lose it. Um, it, it it's impossible to, to for someone somewhere to create more of them. The dollar is going through an, an incredible um, phase where governments are just printing more and more of them. And what people don't realize is they're being taxed. Every time the US government does another trillion dollar treasury bill, they're actually taxing every single person who holds US dollars. You can't do that with cryptocurrencies, most of them, with Bitcoin specifically, because it's, it's a model that is, is a deflationary model. And I think that that philosophically, ultimately, that will lead to it becoming a, valuables, a value store. You are 100% correct. Philosophically, it's amazing. I believe in the future everything will go digital. Crypto will do 
whatever mail done to regular uh, mail that you will send, you just send an email instead of sending a letter. But uh, there is time until it will happen. Uh, there is a new technology on the rise. It's called hash graph, which is much more superior to blockchain technology. And for example, the electricity cost required to operate the uh, hash graph technology is a tiny percentage of electricity required to operate blockchain technology. This is just one of the advantages. So my question is, what is your view on this rising uh, new technology? Is it a danger to traditional cryptos? Uh, that's I would like to find out from you guys. Do you know that in, uh, in the crypto world, there is a proof of work and proof of stake? You're familiar with the two methodologies? So I think uh, the methodologies will go and improve themselves. I don't see a specific one that will do a threat to other. I think the challenges is, is like we see in the Bitcoin, is, is scalability. And uh, again, we want it to be centrali uh, decentralized. We want to be able to transfer value quickly and uh, in an anonymous way. Any technology that will come, it doesn't matter. It's just improving. We have cars that was running on, on diesel fuel and now they're running on electricity. Uh, of course, any new technology will ruin the existing one, but there need to be existing proof that the technology is, is, is massive and scale. Um. I think it's not correct to say that this new technology, uh, hash graphs, uh, is better than blockchain technology. It was also introduced many t many years ago, and I believe you are talking about Byteball or something like that, right? Uh, this kind of uh, cryptocurrency, and uh, I, c I can't g uh, get uh, really deep into details, technical details, but technically. Uh, there are a lot of uh, weakness in this technology as well. Uh, so basically also there, there is different uh, consensus model and it's not about really uh, electricity. So for some maybe problems to solve these problems, this technology could, could be uh, better than blockchain. But in general, it's not correct to say that uh, it's uh, modern or maybe more progressive uh, as blockchain. And yeah, so there are a lot of actually uh, consensus model, not only the proof of work and proof of stake, there are some others as well, and there will be others um, and more, uh, but my, for example, my personal opinion is that the proof of work is the uh, really uh, only one uh, consensus model where you are un independent from any, uh, any person or any uh, decision of any person uh, or community. So basically proof of work is the only one algorithmic uh, consensus that uh, you cannot uh, you cannot really uh, influence in it I, I don't care <laughs> honestly uh, in a year's time ether may be faster Bitcoin cash may have delivered on those promises or may not Bitcoin might be dead in that one dollar it doesn't matter we're creating an economy, not a technology. I, I, I'm happy to move from Ether to Bitcoin Cash if Bitcoin Cash proves to be much faster and more scalable and better, and so on and so forth. My, my, my token, my, the usage of our token is not determined by the technology underneath it. It's determined by how much we manage to create a marketplace and drive an, an economic adoption of the marketplace. It's not a technical argument for me. Um, you know, uh, three, three of the four people on the panel have said that the stored value is uh, part, at least part and parcel, and the advantages of the stored value to uh, coins are at least part and parcel due to the decentralized nature of the blockchain. Um, and also a lot of the ICO projects that I see rely on the decentralized nature of the blockchain being instrumental into why their product is better than someone else's. But when I look at a lot of it, I think centralized um, a centralized system would actually be better or a decentralized system wouldn't help. Why is it that you guys think that um, the decentralized nature of the system is of key importance for cryptocurrencies? I can tell you that it's, uh, there's a few aspects, I would choose one of them, and it's removing the middleman. And if you're removing the middleman, you make the product or the service much cheaper to the end users, and that's the core value. Let's say you take 
Amazon, for example, if it's a decentralized system that connecting in a good manner, I don't think it's possible, but it's in a, let's say it's possible in a good manner, then the product itself will be much more cheaper and everybody can, it's a win-win situation. Well, okay, if it's about cheapening the product of a stored value or of a trading uh, coin, then all Bitcoin really need, it, all Bitcoin will do at the end is put downward price pressure on transactions for banks, in which case it's a kind of equal from that argument as to uh, what banking will be in three years. I still don't see where you have an advantage by it being decentralized, because we could have downward price pressure, automate more, and have it as a centralized server. We could still do proof of work and other things, but we don't need to distribute a ledger. Talking about the middleman, the advantages of uh, taking out the middleman. So uh, we all need to remember that the middleman also taking care of us because the bank that uh, is taking care of our money, which is the middleman at the moment, and we're paying uh, uh, our fees to the bank, is taking care of us. So if we have a problem with the credit card and we talk to credit card company, they give us back the money. If you do a mistake or if you lose your, uh, your uh, private key for your blockchain account, nobody will give you back the money. So, it's so okay having the middleman is not always uh, negative. Uh, the new technology, of course, one of the advantages, like my friend said, is to remove these uh, fees along the way, and then you make more margin, you make more money. But remember, and we must remember, that there is also a bigger risk. And the miners are being, uh, basically the miners are middlemen anyway. You just have a lot of middlemen who are sharing the task. I mean, isn't that a fair, a fair re retort? Mine and mine is on middlemen. Well, a middleman implies that some guy in the middle essentially holds your value for you. But pay PayPal. PayPal is Bitcoin without the Bitcoin, you know, without the decentralized ledger. And it's a very successful company. It's also a company that's making money, profiting from the activity, and, and obviously that profit is coming out of somebody's pocket. I think you're right to say that there's a lot of applications that do not require DLT, and there's a hell of a lot of tokens and ICOs out there right now which are offering solutions for problems that don't exist or that do not require decentralization. I mean, I saw one the other day, dental coin. Who the hell wants a crypto coin to pay your dentist? Who, gets, who ever goes to the dentist and isn't there? And if you're there, you can give them some money out of your pocket. It makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. But there are activities, and I'll bring our activity into sports betting, where it's very valid use case to say, I may want to place a bet that I can't place or don't want to place on a UK book. Maybe the odds are worse or whatever, or maybe the, the amount on the bet is more. And the other part of the bet is a bet party who I do not know. It's a party who may be in Asia, maybe anywhere in the world. And in that scenario, a distributed uh, uh, technology makes sense. I agree there are certain applications, yours is one of them, that makes sense. But I, most of the ICOs that I've seen in the space don't rely on the, the, the decentralized nature of the blockchain. And essentially, therefore, they don't make necessarily make sense to me. You want to add something? Yes, just a small aspect. Decentralized equal trust. I'm running a technology business. You're all sending traffic to a 666 casino. Who knows what is going on around the scene? Even the regulators, I can tell you, all the financial regulators don't really understand the technology inside, and brokers have the power of manipulate the system. Uh, we are proud in the fact that we are developing a fair trading system, but it's so easy to cheat the clients. And in a lot of businesses, if it's a decentralized, you know that the system is fair, there is trust, and I think the middleman, there can always be a middleman that can get a specific fee, but he doesn't hold the power over the network and he's just providing services to the network. And maybe the network can accept services from multiple middlemen and the end users can rank them and disqualify one of them. And it's, one, it's not a one entity that is holding the power of the network. I mean, I, I guess I'd reply to that by saying most transactions once you're in a transactional event like gaming are taking place off blockchain so it's only mo the money in and money out that goes to the blockchain not the 37 spins of your slot machine that are on the blockchain so it's not provable and everything that you said could be solved with an open ledger that's centralized exactly i wanted to add that uh, there is an open ledger technology it's not necessary to be uh, decentralized and uh, talking about our business our gaming business uh, in my opinion, it, it would be great if regulators, let's say UK, GC, could implement the infrastructure 
uh, based on some private blockchain uh, that is built on this open ledger technology. Uh, we'll remove all the fiat currency at all, so basically it will be said that uh, all gambling sites, uh, all spetting, sports betting sites within the UK should accept only this one coin that is issued by UKGC, application, used to applic uh, application of UKGC, and uh, this coin you can buy at, let's say, uh, this and this and this banks in UK. And these banks are responsible for KYC, for IML, but not the gaming operators. So the gaming operators, they are responsible to deliver the super service, uh, fairness, and it, it could be done and achieved by the whole private blockchain infrastructure based on the UKGC uh, um, organization. So uh, why not to use this, uh, and it shouldn't be de decentralized. So it will be decentralized within one private, let's say, or controlled government control group or system, but it will be not uh, completely open uh, for out, uh, outside. But you can track the users, you can track how they play, uh, how much they spend. You can see uh, how much taxes you should, as a, as a taxation organization, you should collect. And you can do it uh, in real time online without any uh, any fairness to, do, to 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 be treated or to get in some IML scandal, etc. So it's completely transparent. I mean, I, in, in many in many senses, I agree. Um, in this one particular instance, though, I wouldn't give that much control to one government because it would be like tax my ass until I'm dead, coin. But pretty soon, as soon as the newspaper decided okay, we should take a little bit more of this gambling market. It's a soft tax, this and that. In that case, I'd like to see multiple coins. I'd like to see multiple operators. I'd like to see it privatized, not government. But um, you're right, the technology could exist that way. Do we have any comp comments from our audience? Yes, to our friend who is self-admittedly 23 and naive. Which is the best description. Not naive, what did you say? Not No, flustered. Simpleton, even better. No. Uh, 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 a oh, well aware simpleton. Here you go. Um, so, to um, clarify, you're saying that we can regulate the technology and rules, guidelines regarding cryptocurrency? No. At the same time, not regulating. Okay, fine. So, let's say we can regulate the technology guidelines, only the guidelines for the technology and not regulate the currency. No, we can uh, use the technology to regulate the business industry. It's a little bit different. So we are talking about uh, regulation in the business, so protecting players, and we are talking about how to use the current technology of blockchain open ledger to make this business m really transparent, really clean, and to uh, give the operators uh, really do business and not to take care of any paperwork, uh, collecting papers, etc. Okay, one last question. So my question to you is, okay, you're... There's a, there's a split here, right? We want to provide um, a certain regulation. At the same time, we don't want people's money being secured or regulated by, you know, any, centrali any centralized government that operates fiat currency. So is there a possibility for creating a centralized system to just form these guidelines and regulate that these guidelines are followed? I mean, again, we, we should uh, separate. We are talking about the gambling business and pl player protection. We are not talking about that we want to uh, build like a completely decentralized money system uh, worldwide, which will, uh, I don't know, rule the world. So uh, I, hope, I hope it will be <laughs> like this, but anyway, we, do, we, we, are, we, should be stay in, we should stay in reality. So we are really live in the real world. There are countries uh, that can't decide any small problems bet between them, like, uh, I don't know, like uh, some Brexit or some uh, ecological uh, problem. So how they can uh, right now agree on some blockchain technology worldwide, etc. So uh, basically we are talking about the gambling liberation. And my point is here that uh, I really want to that players should be protected. So players should be cheated, etc. Et it, it's easy to do with blockchain and open, open legend technology within one regulated uh, regime, let's say, like this. Okay, we have uh, two more questions. This young lady, that gentleman, oh, and then that gentleman too. Uh, hello, I'm uh, Claire. 
With uh, Zotape, we are a PSP processing uh, uh, worldwide and uh, going very much into crypto right now as well. The ICOs, best PSP mining. in the market if you need to <laughs> accept Bitcoin crypto maneuvers. I'm not a shareholder, <laughs> one of our partners, amazing company. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's talk after the show. <laughs> Uh, so you mentioned, and I also believe it would be a very good solution to use the technology itself. I, l I love the technology itself. To use the technology to regulate the business. I don't see how this can happen if you have a new ICO, a new coin emerging every half an hour. And if each broker is going to create its own coin, how are the users going to be protected? They don't even have time to instruct themselves on how to use the coin. Easy. So... Uh I'm not a citizen of uh, UK, but if you live, for example, in UK, right now and you want to gamble on the website, you completely understand that uh, you basically legally you can play only in the websites which have a uh, UKGC label, like they, are, they have the license, right? So uh, you can use pounds to deposit in this into these sites. You can play, you can withdraw the money. So this is... Uh, already an infrastructure inside the country. So why not to upgrade this infrastructure uh, and to build the blockchain, same, same principle, but uh, only the blockchain, only one coin, which will be uh, published by UKGC and controlled as well, and some other authorities as well, of course, but basically it will be not an ICO, like an Excel ICO, so it will be only one coin, like pound. But the coin. So this is exactly what I mean. And right now we're seeing coins emerging every every day. You have a new coin. This is how I s I see the of failure course, but I, I'd of say the crypto It's a difference bec between a coin that uh, I will produce tomorrow or a coin that will UKGC produce, and it will be a completely government coin uh, for only gambling business. And uh, basically, you will be able to play within the region of legally within the region of UK only with this coin. So basically, no other licensed UKGC casino or sports betting website will be able to accept any other currencies, even fiat currencies, no pounds at all. Okay, but you said at the beginning of the presentation that the advantage of the crypto was that you could rely on it because it's not regulated such as the fiat currencies. And now you're saying that you want, you want the same model to be applied to the crypto. No, I didn't say it about regulation at all. Uh, I said that it's your value, you can control it, same here. You can uh, host this coin in your wallet and you control it. You, will, you can ex exchange it, this, wallet uh, this coin officially into pounds and uh, get your fiat money or you can store it in your wallet uh, at yourself. But uh, I didn't say it about the regulation. I said about the holding the value. I mean, holding the real value uh, and not the paper. Thank you. I, w I want to give an example of uh, something that came out from the blockchain uh, technology back in the days. It was mentioned by even before uh, the DICE game. So you're talking about regulation for the system and uh, you talked about the UKGC that given the authority for me as a player that this is a safe place to, to, to gamble. So uh, basically uh, the DICE game that was started uh, in the industry five or six years ago is a probably fair game. Probably fair means that the player can uh, be sure based on blockchain technology that the result of the, uh, his bet was predetermined. You can see it in dice and you can see it in slots as well. So imagine the player, he don't need a GC to tell him that this is a safe place. He can do it by himself with the technology and he can see that the result of his uh, uh, last game on the slot was predetermined by the system and nobody uh, affects the result. So even the regulation itself is different now. I want to give you a warning. Uh, not about the price of the Bitcoin, <laughs> about sending traffic. There's a lot of scams going on uh, related to Bitcoins. And if we're looking a bit back, like three months ago, we see regulators attacking and, and, uh, and they're looking for the guys that were marketing very aggressively the binary option industry. Um, so I'm just saying, if you're sending traffic to an ICO and they're giving you 50% of the deposits, there's a lot of uh, people like this, ICOs like this, be aware, think carefully who, who you're marketing. One from a personal uh, point of view, you know, if you want to 
to be fair with yourself, but other than that, the regulators will wake up and they will blame the people that made the, the poor person feel that he can invest and become a millionaire in a specific ICO. Uh, so if you are a small affiliate, you shouldn't care, but if you are a proper company, it's a risk that I'm not sure you're willing to take. Right, um, my question would be, um, how do you perceive the wider crypto ecosystem developing where we have equity tokenization and democratization of venture capital, where a person at $100 is nearly at equal footing with somebody that is investing 100,000. And we have crypto markets that are open 24 seven throughout the year. Christmas, you can be trading. Sunday, you can be trading. And uh, you can, you know, a gambler could also be part owner of a casino crypto casino that he's gambling at um, and, and what's our perception of kind of how the wider crypto market is developing with securitization? Uh, that's an interesting question. I, I th the first thing I'd say is that when it comes to, to what we call equity tokens, tokens where you're essentially buying a, a share of profits of a business, whether it's a casino or anything else, I don't personally believe these, these tokens have any exemption from securities legislation that it really already exists in every civilized country in the world. And you've seen that with the clamp down in the US and in China and so on. So I, I, I think the days of being able to issue a crypto coin uh, as a share in a business and not complying with existing public offering legislation are probably numbered. On the counter side, I would say, having just been through an ICO, you do, there's an amazing social aspect to, to this process. We, we, we've got a telegram group with three and a half thousand people talking about our business on it. We have to pay three people to monitor the group during the ICO process. And, and that group's still active and, and we intend to keep it going. It's actually really nice to have a, a communication channel with your little tiny investors and your bigger investors. And the amazing thing is these people come on, they, they, they defend you. I mean, I've got guys on the Telegram group who sit hours and hours every day saying the things that I should be saying for me and I'm not paying them a dime. It's, it's actually brilliant. So that side of it is fantastic. I love that democratization of, um, of equity fundraising, but I do fear that that's, um, the, the regulators are gonna really clamp down hard on that. And I think that, that particularly for any business that can't to demonstrate a clear utility for their tokens, uh, going forward it's gonna become harder and harder to ICO. In fact, it already is, and I think within a few months' time that those ICOs will die. Hello, um, Mark Durant from Bloomberg. Um, I'm noticing, obviously this week's been a major global sell-off in the markets. I'm just looking at the VIX. It's currently trading at 31.4. It's about the highest volatility in the market since Brexit. Uh, actually, since Brexit at the, at the beginning of the, the year. In this environment, do you think there is actually any, uh, any support for cryptocurrencies now? Uh, we, you've seen a, a massive global sell-off of cryptocurrencies. It has come back, and I see that you're looking at about 8,400 on, on the, on the uh, Bitcoin at the minute. But uh, where, where, where does the panel think cryptos are going to go next? Well, uh, we know where he thinks they're going to go. <laughs> no, all due respect... Let's not panic about Bitcoin being at $8,000. When I started my ICO four months ago, it was less than that. Ether was $403, the very first Ether deposit I got four months ago. It's $800 today. This is not a massive sell-off. This is, a, this is it's gone down to half of what it gained. You know, people have a very short memory when a crash goes down and a long memory when it goes up. How about, how about the uh, traditional markets? How about NASDAQ, Dow Jones right now? What do you... Well, that, that, that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the fact that there's... Same. There's, th I mean, there's the same, big, same gameplay. There's a big situation <laughs> going on at the moment, and there's a bit of a, a risk-off kind of thing. People are sort of running to um, safer things, and does that include cryptocurrencies? I'd, I'd actually counter that by saying that when you see material events happen either in government or in major markets, crypto tends to go up. Crypto seems to be a perfect and natural hedge for anything happening in the wider markets, which are directly correlated to what's happening, for instance, locally. So your Nasdaq's falling off because of this fear of interest rate hikes in the US. Um, hey, crypto's a natural hedge as it's not tied to any fiat currencies. So in theory, 
if it wasn't just, well, if it's randomly volatile, I suppose, but uh, in theory, when it stabilizes, it should be a great hedge against any kind of fiat, I think is the, the common wisdom. I no, Does anyone know when? <laughs> no. Well, where it's gonna go in the next few months? <laughs> does anyone wanna speculate? Yeah. You, you think Bitcoin's no. gonna fall off an edge? Just. I'm very disturbed, disturbed by the answer you just gave me. You were very disturbed, and and that was my. That's what, exactly why I said it. And people, I think, are being brainwashed, and I think as affiliate, you should take the opportunity and create a funnel specifically about what this guy. Sorry, if I forgot the name from Bloomberg just said. Mark. Markets are going down. Take your money, invest them in a stabilized crypto that has not been affected by by anything. It's very dangerous. I think the most of the population that don't have money today are being poorly advised to buy Bitcoin. Uh, we are all in the industry of promises. Come to the casino, get a bonus, but there is a big danger here, like in all the bubbles that are poor people that don't have the money, take all those savings, they don't have a proper education, and they invest them in something that can go down in a second. The equity market have value. Those companies are generating value. Coca-Cola is generating value. Amazon is generating value. Utility tokens are not generating anything at this stage. Uh, there is a story about a man. I won't tell you the story, but it, uh, it's, it's too long, maybe privately, but it's a bubble, people. No one care about the technology around it, it's a bubble. Enjoy the bubble as you can. Make money by pushing funnels related to it. Uh, but uh, I'm, but not, I'm not suggesting you should, I have I'm not suggesting buying crypto. I'm suggesting that it's a natural edge against fiat currencies because it's not tied necessarily to a fiat. You're wrong. There's no statistical relation. There's no, no way any uh, scientific test done on this, and this is very bad, uh, bad uh, advice you give people. You know, uh, when uh, the point is that it's not statistically uh, correlated. That's why it's a hedge. But no, I would like no. to add uh, one uh, okay. note about uh, what the guy just said. That even when the prices are going down and the market is going down, like uh, we saw in 2013 and like we're seeing now, nobody, as far as I know, and I know a lot of people involved, nobody is selling all his crypto. I have never heard of someone saying, okay, this is all my crypto out, I'm out of the game. No one. Always someone keeps something for himself because somewhere in the back of your mind, one day, something else will happen. Guys, we are like people that are speaking about the numbers in roulette. Listen, zero just came out. The correlation say it won't go again. Let's do blue. Let Listen, everything is a guess. In general, the financial market, by the way, 99% of the people that go into the financial market, specifically day trader, I can give you reports, are losing their money. And it's not because the financial asset, it's because of the psychology of a trader that is a risk taker. And uh, it's like we lo looking on the weather and saying why it was cold. It's, it's an issue. Ivan, we have one last, we have time for one last comment. Go ahead, Ivan. I mean, the correct word was everything. Everything is the bubble. Really, not only cryptocurrency, everything. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you just want to have some, uh, store some uh, investments, just make a portfolio. Store something in crypto, store something in fiat, uh, real estate, etc., etc. So, but you will no, no, never be sure that uh, it will be stable. Remember a uh, uh, famous uh, case with uh, UK pound, uh, one one person, one uh, smart uh, businessman just uh, did like I don't remember the exactly the how much was the down, but it was like really but super but down. Yeah, so a lot of people lost a lot of money. But it's not one person. It's one person. It that was shouted, one person. No, he shouted. Listen, George Soros, right? Listen. You've been brainwashed. The value of your currency, your economic, uh, your economic is bad. He just was saying the truth about what is was happening. And yes, he made a lot of money also by pushing the coin. But 
if the economical government or atmosphere is good, no one can push the currency. Speculators can affect the currency, the fiat currency, for a limited specific uh, amount of time. All right. Yeah, maybe a final note. Uh, Finally. Um, uh, I'm participating in the panels uh, in these conferences and in Asia as well, and we're talking about uh, marketing and the cryptocurrencies and opportunities. And always the conversation goes to the way that uh, is it a bubble or not a bubble? Should I go in? Should I go out? And so on. Uh, let's take it back to the ground and just to, to summarize from the marketing point of view, there for affiliates and for operators, cryptocurrencies is an opportunity. There is a risk. It's an opportunity. It's a new funnel. It's a new game. Go for it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a, thank you for a very spirited conversation and a round of applause to our, our panel. <laughs> I'd just like to uh, end this session by saying, I think it was in 2014, maybe 2013, I put on my first, um, it was Bitcoin for iGaming conference. And uh, much like today, it was a very spirited debate that nearly wound up in our first fist fight on a panel. So it's good to see that um, everyone is as excited about this and have as strong opinions in 2018 as we did in 2013. So I think there's a lot more to shake out before we could actually answer any of these questions. But it's certainly an exciting space that looks like it has some potential. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Michael Caselli. It's been a pleasure being your chairman. Please enjoy the expo for the rest of the day. Good night. <laughs>